And there were like 800 people that applied for the job because remember mm -hmm. it's global, right? And, but I could tell very quickly, you know, when you have what I call the pretty resumes with all of the colors and images and icons, those all <laughs> trip up ATS. Jill, this, this is part of the conversation that I really wanted to explore with you mm -hmm. because I, I, you know, I work with executives to transform from a employee to a solopreneur or to go to the next step. And you mentioned that they needed coaching because, you know, I, coming out of the professional ranks, especially with what's going on right now. People at the top of the food chain of their career, when they get laid off, they're gonna have a heck of a time following another position because they're being paid so much, nobody's gonna wanna hire them. What are, what are you finding in that area? Well, uh, the, the coaching and the best practices that uh, my organization provides, we do have a very high report rate on our clients landing their next opportunities, either during the course of their program or shortly thereafter. And because, you know, we really focus on their development and, and introducing them to the, the new way <laughs> of promoting marketing themselves and being in today's job market. Um, so it is, as with most things, when you're making a change, um, and I'll just give you a quick example, just changing how you format your resume. <laughs> you know, there's okay. some resistance to that, but you know, it does take some time explaining, here's why, you know, we position the resumes as we recommend. There was a time, certainly when I started out in HR, where I said people had pretty resumes. They looked visually attractive and, you know, they were done on quality stock paper. Well, in today's job market, that really doesn't matter. The key is how are you going to get your resume through an online job application process? And that's because it has to be ATS compliant. And so the, the formatting is not fancy. I say we scale all of that down and we highlight how to position and tell their professional work story um, so that ATS will read, easily read and parse their resume and plug it into the online job application, but then position their resume in such a way that it's going to attract the eye and the attention of the recruiters and the hiring managers. Okay. So, so an education process as well. Well, being from IT, I understand that ATS stuff, and there has been some concern that when you feed your resume through systems like that, that you really don't know if you're getting the eyes on your resume that need to be on it, right? And one of the things that has been happening in, in our industry is the diversity needed in the industry. What are you seeing in that area? Well, um, you... That's okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Well, I can't actually buy myself. I guess I did. Oh, no, this this is live. This is what makes it so so much fun. Cause something's gonna happen. You just know it. You yeah. can tell the way it started. Yeah. Oops. Oh. So let me let me get back to your question. Um, mm -hmm. You see, again, I'm just referencing my past because it's different in today's job market. In the past, right. a resume could get a person a job. Their resume could get them the job. But today, the resume has to get them the interview. So in other words, the resume needs to effectively make it through the applicant tracking system 
score high enough to garner the attention of the recruiter. And now, so it's not about on the front end that resume being fancy, it's about it being ATS compliant to get it through ATS. And then the content has to be formatted and easy to read and in such a way that's going to attract the attention of the recruiter. Because, you know, today's job market, it's a global job market. I had a client tell me, you know, Jill, I know I'm the best person for this job. I wasn't even called. And I said, it's real easy for me to tell. I said, let me see the job posting and let me see your resume. Because I could see on LinkedIn, there were like 800 people that applied for the job. Because remember, it's global, right? And But I could tell very quickly, you know, when you have what I call the pretty resumes with all of the colors and images and icons. Those all <laughs> trip up ATS. And then the question is, does your resume speak to the job posting? Right. It has to speak to it. So the person can have the knowledge, skills, and abilities, but it still has to speak to the job posting so that when it's parsed by ATS, it gets a high score in terms of a high match rate to the job posting. So what are you seeing in the area of executives? Because the people that come to me are uh, directors, executives. They're not really out of work, but they're traversing their career path. For instance, yeah. um, one of the guys that I've coached since he got his master's degree, he ended up being a director at mental health for Milwaukee and his next step was to be a CEO and so he actually we put it things together and I taught him how to put the online reputation together because they on those at that level they're going to check you out online first and they're going to mm -hmm. approach you then I had another client in Australia he sold his company to Salesforce. And so now mm -hmm. he wanted to restart his career. What are you seeing in those areas for them? Well, my clients might be a little different than yours um, because okay. they're, they're in a position where they have what I, what I say, uh, think time in terms of what direction do you want to go in? You see, most people are in the momentum of working just, and that's all they, they know to do because you have a process on, you know, when you wake up, how many hours you invest in work and so forth. But the clients that we have, they're, they're under a severance program. And so they have some think time and I encourage my clients to be kind to themselves and to really consider the next phase of their career journey. Because sometimes what can happen, you're on this momentum of just working. And so you'll take the next opportunity. But my question is, is this really what you want to do? And some people, because they know they've been working, they believe that's what they want to do. But when I, you know, just be kind to yourself. You have some time to think about this and reconsider what your, what your lifestyle, I don't just want to say career, but what your lifestyle will look like. Yes. And a lot of clients, they've been in what you would call traditional work assignments for the same employer. But then we have also what are called portfolio clients where they have an element of traditional work. Then they've done, you know, contract work or started their own business. So they're entrepreneur. And then there's blended in with that gig work. So it's a, it's a, a variety of different things that they can do because they, they you know, they have the knowledge, skills and abilities, but how do you want that traditional, only the traditional work during this season in life? So a lot of uh, clients rethink their next step before just lunging out into the very same thing that they've been doing. When